everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to 10,000 and Below, a series where I'm going through games ranked on Board Game Geek, kind of just off the cuff looking at the different games, a hundred at a time, uh, that are ranked fairly low. But fairly low doesn't always mean bad. Now, I'm not recording all of these at one time, and so there's rankings change consistently. So you'll see a few games here that were mentioned in the last video, and that's just the way things are. But let's get started. Uh, first, we have here Arcade. Now, that's kind of, is it about a video game arcade? No, it's a skirmish game here for two players from Nestor Andres. Uh, he prints on demand. Uh, this actually looks pretty cool. Well, those are pretty neat little things. Definitely has, ooh, ooh, I want to play Tank Battle, just seeing that. Okay, I like how this one looks, and it's probably a pretty abstract strategy game. And then we mentioned Remnants last time. Here we have Warhammer Age of Sigmar, The Rise and Fall of Anvalor. Now this game, I don't believe I played this one. Uh, Sam played this one. It's designed by the same guy who designed Nations. And so I'm really kind of surprised that this one hasn't taken off more. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to play it. It doesn't really look a lot like Warhammer. But it does look like a kind of game that I might be interested in giving a whirl. Very few rankings, though, for this one. All right, then we jump down to, uh, I mentioned Candy Time last time, one of the markets we talked about last time. We talked about a lot of these last time. And now we're down to Mafia. All right, so this is not, I, I don't think this is the actual Mafia slash werewolf style game. Instead, it looks like it is a game in which you have secret goals, Mafia, and police. Let's take a look at the cards. Yeah, I'm not sure this one ever came out in English. Huh. It's kind of a really, really generic name, no Mafia. There's a sports timeline. There's another one I don't think ever came out in English. Timelines are you're trying to put things in different orders. And all that's here is just a picture of the box. It came out in 2014. Hmm. Secrets of the Lost Station. I'm going to mention this one here. This one is actually on my shelf right now. This is humongous. They, there are so many pieces in this box. Miniatures and boards. It's a really big epic game from, well, the company Everything Epic. So, I mean, I'm going to play it at some point, but somewhat intimidated by the amount of stuff that's in there. But this was a pretty big Kickstarter. Here's a game called Swordfish. Huh. So this is from Elfinworks. It's a 2012 game. It's about fishing and the commerce of swordfish. That's not a bad looking board. Have I ever played this? Well, I'm sorry. I, I know I haven't played it. I guess my, my word would be have I ever even seen it. So that's interesting. And obviously has not gotten super high reviews and uh, very few of them actually huh might have to check that one out someday all right moving down here at the bark side okay i just gotta look at that such a bad name it's from korea korean games well they make some pretty good ones you can be a bad dog you just don't want to be the one that's caught in the end i like that concept talked about jenga last time certainly one of the ones that has the highest uh rated I mean, the highest number of ratings for being so low. Bus Stop, the board game. What is that one? Uh, that's from Japan Brand. And it's about getting out of... Oh, that looks, that looks fun. Bus Stop feels like it should be two words, though. That looks like Bus Stop or Bus Stop, like a one-word thing. All right, Mo Money. Wow, it's been a long time since I played this one. Maybe not a long four years. Mo Money is where you are... Starting as a startup landscape, and you are going to go around and mow people's lawns. And it's not bad. You're just picking things at the same time, trying to complete different jobs, trying to go out there and have the right tools to mow something. As someone who lives in Florida, this is certainly a competitive, thriving business down here. So I looked at that in December 2015. Pyramid Home Game. <laughs> well, 
Oh, that is Donny Osmond. Um, so this is if you want to play the whatever it is. I guess it's just called Pyramid now. It was called the 50000 Pyramid. You can see the different pictures here. The $20,000 Pyramid. The hundred. Is that the Million Dollar Pyramid? I assume you're just playing a version of the game. That's what it looks like. I mean, Pyramid was always a game you could play as a party game, I suppose, just without the immense amounts of money that some people are getting. Clue, The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror. Okay, this is from Walt Disney. I don't remember uh, Goofy and Mickey Mouse being in a Tower of Terror. And what is Minnie wearing? Huh. Well, it looks like just another version of Clue. Huh. All righty, we got Pit Stop and Knockout. They sound like they're two games. Endless Pass, a Viking Saga. I think Sam reviewed this one. Yeah, he did. This one, I have to say, this one from WizKids, it was a hard attraction for me because this actual box just looks boring. And then when you look at the stuff that's in it, it doesn't look that much more exciting. So, I don't know. Maybe it's good. It just didn't really pull me in when I saw it. Fuzzy Mage Fight. Hmm. Well, it's about, if you like fuzzy mages, I suppose. Oh, how cute. Yeah, well, I don't know if the game's any good or not. All right, nuts we talked about last time. Pandorum. So Pandorum is an interesting game. I just reviewed this one few weeks ago, actually, from Cosmodrome Games. It's kind of an abstract strategy game where you're moving your pieces around this board and building, and you're building different play things. But as you build them, you then get to do, you, you play scoring cards and you'll score points. So very abstract game, but I thought it was a pretty neat one. So Cosmodrome's the same folks who made Smartphone. Alrighty, this game here, which has a lot of ratings for coming out 2011 from Jira's Games. A sci-fi game which you're trying to, okay, control and be a jerk to everyone else. Huh, that's a lot of ratings, though, for that. D-Day, Interstellar Mayhem. And then there's Queen of the Hill. I wanted to see if that's related to King of the Hill. Interstellar Mayhem, which is a very, very generic name. And generic space-looking game. This came out in 2010. Queen of the Hill. No, it does not have anything to do with King of the Hill. It is more of a Japanime style game. Queen of the Hill. Now, this is from Dominic. He's designed several games that I played Medieval Lords. Uh, let's continue down. There's some more war games. You'll notice there's probably more war games than any other style of game that's on these things. Rotterdam. This one here came out in 2007. I've definitely heard of this game where you're moving goods around. It looks like it's a pickup and delivery game. I know this one got some buzz back in the day. Those are some pretty neat pieces moving around these different uh, goods and stuff. It looks like an interesting thing. But again, it is ranked fairly low with 236 ratings for it to be down this far. Uh, there's a few reviews here, not too many. Yeah, reviewed a decade ago. Uh, here's another game with 100 ratings. Aqua Dulce. That's kind of a pretty looking game. This came out in 2009. Uh, you want to make a nice aquarium with resources, a simple card game. You're just trying to get rid of all your cards and meet the requirements of the objective cards. Huh, this is interesting. I think the fish are really pretty, but I'm not sure the design of the cards is I would have preferred the cards to look a little better than that. The box is nice, though. All right, Adventure Games, The Volcanic Island. Oh, this one's not out in America yet. I'm really looking forward to it. Or if it is out, I have not played it. This is one of the Adventure Games, the cooperative games from Cosmos. Really, really have enjoyed the first two a lot. So I'm looking forward to trying this third one out. Or is this the, it says this is the fourth one. But I haven't played the third one either. So very much excited about this. Poison Pot. Uh, here's another game I've been going through and talking about the little games from Pin International. 
Uh, these are the folks from a company from Thailand, and this one I did not. I've never played this one. Oh, that well, apparently it's a very abstract game. It's been done in many different ways, but this really, really pretty version, it just looks good. Uh, what are you trying to do? You're trying to have the biggest group, but if a group is next to the poison pot, that group is nullified. That sounds really, really simple. This is a game if I came across, I would definitely get it. Speaking of abstract games, here's Renju, which looks an awful lot like Go. It's the adult version of Go Moku. It's played on a Go board with Go pieces, 15 by 15. Get five stones in a row. Hmm? All right. Sounds like a rule set. Rogue Agent. This one's ranked fairly low. I remember when this came out, the David Oslus. I'm, I'm finding I tend not to like his designs. I definitely am not a fan of his artwork. He does everything and I'm and a hundred percent I'm not a fan of his rule books. This one here, rolling dice and and it had a bunch of interesting mechanisms. They didn't come together. The graphic design and art didn't help the game at all. It's a cool theme, but I did not think much of it and you can see it's not ranked very highly either. Clue Dungeons and Dragons Who I remember making fun of this before. Let's see who could have done it. Is it the Beholder, the Gelatinous Cube, the Goblin, the Bugbear, the Skeleton, and the Displacer Beast? Definitely the Gelatinous Cube. Crimeopolis Showdown. Huh. I'm just looking at this one briefly because I feel like I've seen this game before. Oh, it's from R&R &R Games. That's why. This is uh, who's going to beat who. There's a lot of these games out there. Who? Easter Bunny versus Ben Franklin versus the best babysitter. Uh, I think the Easter Bunny would do a better job than Ben Franklin. He'd probably use experiments on them. Gift Trap Light. Gift Trap is a fun game in which you give gifts to other people. Here's Naruto Shippuden. Naruto. My daughters aren't here to correct me on this one. I played this and I knew nothing about the, the series. I know a lot more about the series now and I think my daughters would have enjoyed this one. It's a cooperative game and it just doesn't come together. It's very, very straightforward. Move and play cards and things like that. I think maybe if you like the theme it might be better, but it wasn't a very good game. TF22 Load, a good two-player game. I mentioned that last time, I think. Avalanche at Yeti Mountain. Uh, this is one... This is from Green Couch Games, and I've seen a lot of their games, but I don't believe I played, well, didn't I play this one? I thought I played this one, where you're skiing down a mountain as fast as you can. Huh, I feel like I've done a review on this one. Maybe I just haven't put the uh, rating in. No? Okay. Hmm. Maybe they have another one that's very similar to it. Uh... Bambuti. Okay. This one here. An annual competition where villagers bring the most valuable. This is from 1999. It definitely looks like the kind of games that came out back then. Kind of a, an interesting back and forth game there. Huh. This is certainly one. It's just two players. Adlung Spiel. Adlung Spiel always had all their, their games come in these small boxes and it's just a deck of cards usually. And sometimes they're good, and sometimes they're okay. Uh, Privateer from 2016. Yeah, this is one where that board just... Again, it just looks like a prototype board. Everything in this thing just screams prototype to me. Uh, it doesn't look like an apps, a, a final game here, unfortunately. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Cogs and Commissars. Eh, another one I was not a big fan of. This is about Russian uh, communist robots, which is kind of a funny theme, I suppose. But the game is just one big take that game, essentially just playing until somebody wins. Let's see. Insula. This is from 2009. What is this? This is from Czech Board Games. Czech Board Games... Make some weird stuff sometimes. It's a competitive and cooperative. It's competitive at the beginning. It often changes to cooperative. Okay. Each player is a brave adventurer trying to defeat a dark lord. The player defeats dark lords, the winner. That is some weird art. 
Doesn't look horrible. Just weird. Huh. All right. Dark, the Star Trek Deep Space Nine Flux. Momentum. Oh, Momentum looks interesting. There's another one from Nestor. The lead, you have to... Uh, marbles. You drop a marble in a square. And then you can drop it and replace it. So how does the board look? That's a pretty looking board. An abstract strategy style game. PDQ. Pretty darn quick word game. I feel like I played PDQ. This came out from Game Right in 2003. Eh, maybe I didn't. You just got to make words out of a few letters. Okay. Seems pretty pretty obvious. Uh, Bahamas. So Quadro. So Quadro is a game in which you essentially run around your house and grab stuff and bring it back. Um, which is good to some degree, but... It's not a game I think adults are as interested in. It's from Cranial Creations, who's made some actually fantastic stuff. This is not one of them. The Bogey, Crot and Rubin. This looks like a kid's game from Cosmos. It's Cabbage and Beats, but means higgledy piggledy. Secret scoring cards. An intro style game. Huh. This looks like the kind of game that if you could talk me into playing. Wonder if this has ever been like reprinted as something else. I don't recognize the designer, Gerd Fenchel. Oh, he did La Chita, which is ranked 704, which will not show up in the 10,000 and below series. Interesting. Alrighty, Battle Lines, Stalingrad Campaign, Fantasy Warfare, Titans. Titan sounds interesting. This is from Go On Board. Oh, it's coming out this year. I see. The Designers, Sounds Familiar, Lucas Wozniak, King and Assassins, Valhalla, Seven Days of Westerplot, Nehemiah, alrighty. Several games that I've heard of for sure, those are his top ones. And it's from Go On Board, and that company has made Valhalla. Okay, I know Sam played that one. Well, this sure looks interesting. It's set in the uh, 17th century, and so they will use... Titans. It looks like a... Ooh. Okay. This must have been at Essen this year, and I just missed it. But I like the idea of these troops on a map style game with Titans in the mix. That sounds fun. I'll look forward to that when it comes out. Speed. Anno Domini. Guillotine. This is not the guillotine... That we all know about across the board. 18 US. About time. All right, let's take a look at about time. Is it about time? You're trying to guess closest to the year of a historic event. Okay, so it's very similar to timeline, except it looks like it's a roll and move and definitely has the look of a mass market style game. Came out in 2007. Cleopatra and the Society of Architects Deluxe Edition. This is one that's coming out this year. This will not stay in the 10,000 and below because Cleopatra has done very well. And this one here with the 3D components, it's going to look fantastic. I'm very much excited about this one when it comes out. Uh, this is Mojito Studios. I'm very, the first game was a lot of fun. And just, as, I mean, to beat the Days of Wonder production is going to be hard. But the pictures on the Kickstarter sure made it seem like it. Holy War Afghanistan, Stratego Marvel Heroes, 2007. I've never heard of this. I've seen Stratego Star Wars. Oh, that's a weird picture. They're like, they're like all just staring at you. The box cover doesn't look bad. That's a kind of cool looking box cover. <laughs> Talk about a cash grab, though. This is definitely it. What's Galactus doing there? If Galactus is on one... Come on now. All right. That's funny. Boing. And then finally, I can't pronounce this. Grand Secle. We always look at the first and the last. And once again, it is another war game. Look at that board. Woo. That looks like an actual map. And there's the pieces. Are those airplanes? Maybe it's not a war game. Nah, I don't know. It sure looks like a war game. Let's take a look here. 
You are going to be levying tax troop building fleets and fortresses, declaring war at the right time. 960 counters. Woo-hoo. A lot going on in there. Well, there you go, folks. That's another 100, and the game's ranked 10,000 and below. There might have been one here I skipped that you think I should talk about or one I did talk about that you enjoyed. Mention that in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Bessel, and you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.